Well, hi, and welcome to my listening post where I do my radio listening mostly in the evenings. And we're going to focus on my ham radio here. Uh, it's a uh, Kenwood TS430S. Nice radio. It's never really worked for me though. So I bought this at a, a ham uh, flea market. I was pretty excited to get it. I didn't pay a lot of money for it. Uh, got it home and it wasn't too long before I started realizing hey, things aren't all that great with this radio. It's got the relay problem. So I'm going to demonstrate the relay problem and then I'm going to fix the relay problem using the standard technique uh, and that is, believe it or not, pumping half an amp backwards into the antenna terminal while operating the radio. If you can just picture, picture that doesn't sound like a good idea, but it is the way to fix the, this radio. So first I'm going to demonstrate its problems here. Now, hear the hiss? Hear the, you notice the hiss started quiet and got a little louder? It got a little louder just now. Oh, quiet again. Pretty sure that's the radio doing that. If I just tune up past four megahertz, the radio goes quiet. Back. Now it's extra loud. Quiet. If I go up through the bands, this is the band switch. Megahertz at a time, quiet, quiet. Quiet, quiet. Oh, a little bit there. Oh, it went quiet. No. That again. I don't think that's uh, fading. I think that's the radio. Here, a little bit there. Oh, relay operated. Went a little quiet. could be quiet up here because it is quiet because my antenna is not so great but I suspect this is also a relay problem Okay, so that's the basic demonstration of the relay problem. Um, of course, it's just dirty contacts. Now, why does this radio have so many relay problems? Because this radio has so many relays in it. There's like a dozen little relays in this radio. So what are the chances that you're not going to have trouble with a dozen relays? Pretty low, because relays are unre unreliable devices. So we have to clean the contacts on the relays. To do that, there's two ways. One is you take the radio completely apart, get the board out with the relays on it, get access to, 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 the, uh, to the relay uh, contacts, put a little cleaner in there, put a little not abrasive thing in there, do a little cleaning stuff. Put it all back together and cross your fingers that it works. Another way, and this is the way recommended by Kenwood itself, is to do the half an amp in to the antenna terminal, hold down the band change button, and just let that go uh, like that for a couple minutes. The current flowing through the relay should clean the contacts, although it is, seems to me it would burn them up, but that's the recommended procedure for this. So I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to give it a try right now. Now I brought with me, brought with me all the way from my shop the other end of my house is this power supply which I seldom use. Okay, so this guy is going to produce the current we need uh, to do the relay contact cleaning procedure with this radio. So I'm going to pull it out. I can pull it out here. Um, normally what I'm listening to with this radio is uh, uh, what I'm doing with it is PSK31. I don't know if I can pull it 
pull this out. And keep it operating. Just need access to the antenna terminal. Antenna terminal is right here. Okay, don't lose the antenna. <laughs> I'm going to lose the antenna down behind my desk here. That's how that's going to happen. Stay there. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is hook up the power supply straight to the antenna terminal. Do that fairly easily. Pretty sure this bang plug is going to go right in. Okay, that's the red one. This black lead, we're just going to connect to any grounded point on the radio. Uh, actually, there's a ground terminal right here. Okay, so we're going to want to push uh, about half an amp. I think I'm going to get about 400 milliamps out of this, out of this supply. And the needle on the current meter here is only going to rise a little bit. And I can look at it closely, it's fairly accurate. I, I checked the calibration on this to make sure when it says you know half an amp it is half an amp, it is. So one, two, three, four, five amps. So half an amp is just just way down here. Um and I think that's all I gotta do. I think I just need to turn this on. Maybe crank it down. Look it up, see let's And I'm going to put this on here. Okay, so this is going up to half an amp here. Half an amp. Is that too hard on this guy? I think he's good for an amp before it overheats. We'll find out. <laughs> I may ruin this in the process. Well, I doubt it. Okay, so we're ready to start. Two minutes. Better, better time it here. Because... Uh, you know, if I don't use a clock to time it, um, I'll convince myself two minutes have gone by when 30 seconds has gone by. So we'll put this on the uh, timer. And we'll set it to two minutes. Start. Two minutes of this in this video. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm doing it on the one megahertz setting, okay, not on the band setting, so it's stopping at every megahertz. As I say, take a look at my ham radio in the meantime. So, this is a nice ham radio, it has a send button there, which will turn on the transmitter voice actuated element Vox I make good use of that for doing um, uh, PSK 31 or FT4 whatever FT8 a couple more buttons there right the processor one doesn't do anything ALC I see I don't know what that is or not I don't easy to believe look there's a button or FM down there in the band uh, or, the, or the mode switch is FM Got some memories over here. I haven't made much use of them because I haven't been able to use the radio effectively because I haven't been doing this, what I'm doing right now, to get it to work on all bands. Notch filter. Um, there's a memory channel switch there. And a number of basic functions you'd find on all these radios. This, these are all memory functions here, I think. Okay, so that, that Morse code didn't come from the ham radio. That, that, that came from my. Uh, Two meter set sitting here. Oh, we're coming up on it. Two minutes went by quick. Okay. Okay, so we stayed right on the half amp. 
position here the whole time we were doing this. Okay, let's uh, Okay, put the antenna back on. Desk, which will be a, a one hour, a one hour affair. Right. Let's put it in. There's a go. There's a go. Right there. Switch here. We'll just listen to it. Let me turn it up a bit more. Let's give it a moment here. So I, I think the variations in uh, volume there are from the signal level on the antenna now, not the radio anymore. If you're a ham radio operator, you recognize all these sounds. Different digital modes of transmission. Now, I don't know what the conditions are today. Uh, right now it's 2.30 in the afternoon. appears to be working now. It was much, you know, I'm in the middle of the day, it's really a bad time to be experimenting here, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's working fine. Wow, okay, there we go. Great. So how long will this repair last? Uh, it'll last all the way to the next time I have to repeat it. Um, I don't know. Uh, this is the standard repair. Look, I didn't even have to take a screw out of the case to fix this. Um, and if you don't realize it's these relays, you might think all kinds of things are wrong with this radio, the way it uh, behaved. But I think there's nothing else out of sorts with this radio. It's a really a very good, really good radio. I think it's from the mid-1980s or maybe earlier 1980s, so it's not new. Not new by any means, but, uh, but a nice radio to use for sure. So, got to get everything else in order now. I've got an antenna I've got to straighten out in the back yard, and I've got a few other things I've got to get into better shape here and uh, get active on my ham radio.
So thanks a lot for watching that. Uh, strange way to fix a radio, for sure. See ya.